everyone, welcome back to my channel and welcome to Thriller Thursday. So for today's video, I'm going to be talking about the unsolved disappearance of the Sodder children. Before I start, I'd just like to say that I mean no offence by making these videos. They are just for educational and awareness purposes. So on Christmas Eve, the 24th of December, 1945, at around 1am, a fire consumed a family's home in Fayetteville, West Virginia. And this was the home of the Sodder family. George and Jenny Sodder and nine of their ten children were in the home when this fire broke out. George, Jenny and four of the children made it out of the house while five of them remained inside. Two-year-old Sylvia, 16-year-old George Jr, 17-year-old Marion and 23-year-old John were the four children that made it out of the house safely. Five-year-old Betty, eight-year-old Jenny, nine-year-old Lewis, 12-year-old Martha and 14-year-old Maurice were the five children that remained inside the home. Their father George tried to start thinking of ways how he could save the children so he broke a window, managed to get inside the house and tried to figure out what he could do. It was completely full of smoke, he could barely find his way around the house and this is when he realised that the staircase leading up to the five children's bedrooms were covered in flames. So he ran back outside and went to get his ladder to put against the house to climb up to the children's bedrooms but when he went to get his ladder it wasn't there and he kept this ladder in the same place all the time. So where was it? So he had the idea to move his truck against the house so he could climb onto the roof and potentially get to the top window to get inside the house but his truck wouldn't start. While he was trying to do this, one of the daughters ran to one of the neighbour's homes and asked them if they could contact the fire brigade and when they tried to do this they couldn't reach them. So then the daughter ran to another's neighbour's house who also couldn't reach them. So this neighbour decided to drive to the fire department in order to get them over to the house quicker. Something very odd about this case is that even though the fire brigade or the fire department was only two and a half miles from the Sodder home, it took them until 8am to turn up when the fire broke out at 1am. Once they had arrived, this house was nothing but ash and had burned down completely to the ground. And amongst these ashes, there was no sign of the five missing Sodder children. So the fire chief said that the fire must have cremated the children and declared them all dead, even issuing them death certificates. The cause of the fire was later said to be due to bad wiring. All that was left of the home was little pieces of basement and they actually built a memorial garden on top of this for their five children. So usually in the case of a fire, if bodies are burnt in a fire, little pieces of bone fragment would usually remain. Also, this fire was said to be due to bad wiring, but George had got his electric and wiring checked only a few weeks before, and the wiring company said that everything was perfect. Shortly after George and Jenny's children were declared deceased, they started questioning what may have actually happened on that Christmas Eve and also questioned whether the children were even in that house that night and they actually thought that they may have been kidnapped. While looking into the time leading up to the fire, there was a lot of suspicious circumstances and a lot of suspicious things that happened. One of these was to do with a life insurance salesman who had tried to sell life insurance to George. So when he tried to make the sale to George, he soon realised that George wasn't interested and didn't want to buy it. And this was when the salesman started to get really frustrated. And this is when he started shouting at George and also said this. 
your goddamn house is going up in smoke and your children are going to be destroyed. You are going to pay for the dirty remarks you have been making about Mussolini. So George was a Italian immigrant but never shared why he immigrated. So within the Sodders community there was a small Italian community who always stuck together and had a lot of the same opinions. George however shared some unpopular opinions about the Italian Prime Minister Mussolini. George's opinions basically went against the Italian government which made him unfavourable within the community. One of their surviving sons spoke about how leading up to this fire he noticed that there was a suspicious man that used to watch the sort of children. Even stranger, on the night of the fire Jenny woke up to a phone call at 12.30am and it was an unknown caller who sounded like they were calling from a Christmas Eve party. The caller asked for someone who didn't live within the home. Before going back to bed, Jenny noticed that the downstairs light was on and that the front door was unlocked. She assumed that all of her children were in bed and that everything was okay, so she went back to sleep. But when the house was later burned down, witnesses came forward and said that the lights were on the whole time the house was on fire, which doesn't line up with other stories like the one about faulty wiring. Reports also surfaced about a man tampering with people's cars in the area, which perhaps was why George's car didn't start, but no one knows where the ladder went. During this time, the Sodder family believed that they had enough evidence to prove that the Sodder children had in fact been kidnapped. Jenny began experimenting with different animal bones, burning them, and every time pieces of bone fragment remained. After finding this out, Jenny spoke to a man who worked in a cremating business and he even said every time a body is cremated, pieces of bone fragment remain. So how did not one of her five children leave any piece of bone fragment in the slightest? Something else quite suspicious was that a woman came forward and said that she claimed to have seen the five Sodder children in someone else's car while this fire was breaking out. A woman who worked at a tourist court also claimed to have seen the five children and said that she served them breakfast, also that there was a car in the car park with a Florida number plate. Another woman at a hotel in Charleston had also claimed to see four of the five children and said she recognised them from pictures in the newspaper. This woman claimed that they were with two men and two women who were all of Italian extraction and there were so many other reports and sightings of the five missing children. A few years later, George saw what appeared to be an image of one of his missing daughters in a newspaper in a school in New York. He went all the way to New York to see if this was actually his daughter but the family of the girl refused to see him. In 1947, a desperate George and Jenny reached out to the FBI in order of assistance. The FBI was willing to help, but the Fayetteville Police and Fire Department declined the offer of assistance, which is very suspicious. Now things start to get even more strange. Private investigators determined that the member of the coroner's jury the man who determined the cause of the fire was nothing more than faulty wiring and that it was only an accident was actually the man who tried to sell George life insurance, the man who essentially threatened him. There were so many tips sent in about sightings of the children and so many people believed that the children were still out there but other people did believe that they died in the fire. Other people even thought that the Mafia was involved. In 1968, 23 years after the fire occurred, Jenny checked the post box and inside was a letter addressed to her, none other members of the family, just her, and had no return address. Inside was a photograph of a man that appeared to be in his mid-twenties and looked a lot like their son Lewis, who was lost in the fire at the age of nine. And on the back of this photo it read, 
I Love Brother Frankie, Lil Boys A90132 or 35. The letter was postmarked from Kentucky and the family hired a private investigator to head over there to find out who sent this letter to them. However, this private investigator was never heard of again. There would be countless sightings and countless tips, but nothing led to anything. And unfortunately, in 1969, George passed away, and in 1989, Jenny passed away. Neither of which ever knowing what truly happened to their children, or ever getting justice for them. So a lot of people believe that this was to get revenge at George. People believe that someone took the ladder to climb into the house to take these children before starting the fire. And many people believe that the children were taken a long time before the fire had actually started. However, this whole thing is very strange and definitely has some sort of foul play involved. The fact that the ladder was missing, the truck wouldn't start, that there was no bone fragments found, that the man who sold, who tried to sell George life insurance was actually working on the jewellery. It just doesn't add up. And also the fact that the fire department took hours to arrive when they only lived two and a half miles away. So that is everything for this case. Let me know what you think happened down below or if you have any other cases that you would like me to cover. Please give this video a thumbs up if you did enjoy and subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you in the next one.